Hello everyone and welcome to Money for Old Rope, the segment or video on this channel where we recorded something on the Weekly Planet and I go, hey, maybe people want to hear this review. Uh, this review for A Quiet Place Part 2 features myself, features Nicholas uh, Mason, who's here with me now for some reason. Money for Old Rope. Yeah, because so we already you, did you it. You came up with this? Yeah. What nice, do you think? I liked it. Yeah. Not the expression. So you came up with the expression. I came up with the expression. Congrats, man. And also my lovely wife, uh, Claire Tonti, who also is a person in her own right with her own podcast and career and situations going on. Uh, people really enjoyed this, so here it is here. Oh, and there's time codes if you want to jump to any particular points. Uh, there's a bit of waffle up top. Non-spoilers and spoilers. You get it. The visual element is paired right back because, look, to be honest, we're in a lockdown. I'm tired. There's bigger projects in the works. I'm tired. I want to die. I want to lie down. It doesn't have to be in that order. Whatever works. Leave a like. Could it just be a picture of John Krasinski? Mm. Uh, I've already made it, so no. But go on, do your joke. Well, I was going to say, could it be a picture of John Krasinski, but you're too tired, so you're not going to do that. that was... <laughs> How about, you know, that, that picture of John Krasinski and he's in the office and he's pointing at a board? Sure. And it's in, it's in the, the video's in the board. Perfect. The, All right. I bet there's nothing on the video because you're not going to do a video. So. There'll be a, a visual element. <laughs> I'll love see it. if I work it in. I might wow. not do it. Everyone keep your eyes peeled, but really this is the kind of thing where just put it on the background, you don't have to watch it. Or maybe do. All right, thanks. I'll be back at the end of your life. I'll be there to say goodbye. That's wow. right. Oh, but that's it's popping on wow. every single person. That's wow. That's that's real creepy, but yeah. impressive. <laughs> I'm very busy. Mm. Goodbye. All right, everybody. It's time for us to talk about everybody. Shut up, part two. The sequel <laughs> to uh, everybody. Just shut. Pipe down. Part whatever. Just what sh big aliens. There's big aliens. There's big monsters. You guys need to calm down. It's your own time. You're wasting. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and your own family. It's your own family. You're getting wasted. <laughs> Now, last time we talked about A Quiet Place, uh, we couldn't get a guest on. We didn't have the technology. Podcasting <laughs> hadn't come that far yet, had it? That's true, yeah. Yeah, but luckily things have been updated since 2018. There wasn't anyone worthy of being a guest when we talked about the last A Quiet Place, which, if I remember correctly, was pretty okay. Yeah. <laughs> but someone stepped up to the plate. They stepped up their right. podcasting uh, game. Yeah. Uh, so this week we are joined by my wife, uh, the, lo the lovely Claire I'm Tonti. Here. We do a podcast together, don't we, Claire? We do, certainly do. It's called Suggestible. I'm here. And also, I'm ruining your chemistry. We, that's what we love. We like people coming in. We like people stepping on our jokes. Mm -hmm. We like people getting mad that we have guests. Those are all the things that we enjoy. And yep. I'm happy to oblige. I'm here. I'm yeah. here to do all those things for you. Now, we've got you on specifically because you're not a horror fan, but... I thought you were going to say you're not horrible. Yeah, you're not horrible. And I'm glad you don't think I am. Mason and I have decided. We took a poll and we decided that you're not horrible what who do we 50 know 50? that's not horrible <laughs> oh. <laughs> i know also we're living in lockdown time so i'm the only guess you could get yeah well that's to also be honest. true mm -hmm. that is right but uh no you not a horror fan but you were a fan of a quiet place part one is that correct Definitely. I loved A Quiet Place 1. I loved it so much until you told me about all the plot holes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what like I love to do. You genuinely do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm that guy at a party. Oh, that's your favourite movie, yeah. is it? Oh, that's your favourite movie? Claire, well, how did Batman even get back into the city? <laughs> Claire, oftentimes uh, uh, we play a game where you tell me about a comedian that you love and then I tell you all the horrible behind the scenes things <laughs> yeah. that make you like them less. You've done that to me so many times. I make I get so mad at you. I get more mad at you than at the actual comedian. Yeah, that's and right. You're the real sad. monster, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, turns out everyone I like is horrible. Yeah, that including is, you too. Well, she's not bloody wrong, am I right, Mason? Well, we're softening the blow. Yeah, because yeah. we're like, oh, yeah, no, the, all those comedians you you like, they're terrible, and the other two you don't like, they're, we're also terrible. <laughs> that's it. So uh, this movie, just to, just to clarify some stuff, it was supposed to come out March of last year. There was a big pandemic. You all remember it. We all, we all had it. We all had the same one. I'm glad it's all over. Oh, Claire, so naive. <laughs> We're back in one. We're back in lockdown now, aren't we, Mason? That's right. We're uh, back again. But this new one had a budget of $61 million. And this it looks, new lockdown. This not, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not enough to give people all the money to survive. No, so the movie had a budget of $61 million. How which, many? $61 million. That's which, so many. Yeah, I agree. It's many millions. <laughs> many it's, millions. U.S. dollars? U.S. dollars. Or dollary do. No, U.S. Do dollary do's aren't dollary jack dues. shit. Is that how I say it? That's how you say it. Dollary yeah. do. You're really endearing yourself to fans <laughs> of both The Simpsons and this podcast. <laughs> Uh, but it looks like in its four-day weekend, it's going to make $57 million in the US alone, which means it's doing really well considering you know the lockdown is easing in most places. It actually beat out Corella in the cinemas. You keep saying it as Corella. It's yeah. Cruella. No, it's Cruella. It's Cruella. <laughs> 
Every time he says Corella, and I go, what? <laughs> like the bird. Yeah. Like, the, like the mandolin, like the captain's mandolin. Thank you, mate. So I did mm-hmm. the same thing the other day. I said, what are you talking about? So it's Cruella. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Corella are the birds that like circle our house. It's Toyota Cruella. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so look, we'll probably talk about uh, Corellum on Suggestible this week. Because our podcast is basically this, but without Nick Mason. Mm. We had a poll and we decided. You didn't make the cut, actually. (laughs) uh, Oh, we had him on one episode, but we decided after that it was so bad. That's right. No more. We got many complaints. But uh, yeah, so we basically just recommend stuff, don't we? We'll watch, read, and listen, and uh, and whatever. Correct. It's called Suggestible. And I suggest that everybody looks at Nick Mason's. Amazing reindeer jumper. All right, let's all have a look. <laughs> let's all look in <laughs> this good. audio oh, okay, media. Well. So, I mean, that's your episode of Suggestible this week, can't I guess? Just <laughs> yeah. clip that and put yeah. it in. Opening titles, <laughs> put an ad in, and then... We're good to go. Bob's yeah. your uncle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, that's linked below and comes out Thursday. There's a huge back catalogue of people who do want to check it out. But, Mason, what do you think the story was? Hey, Claire, call? what do you think the story was? Whoa! Oh, no! A deflection! Yeah, that's a right. A deflection! Oh. No one prepared me for this. <laughs> all right, the story... Is was what 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 do you think the story was? Do you mean in the past or now? No, is was 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 story it was. <laughs> what do you think it was? All right, I'm gonna okay. Do I do it seriously? Do I set the scene? We, we do it seriously. Do we, we, tell we, take the story? It, we take it very seriously, Claire. <laughs> All right, okay. Anyway, I'm on, okay. My, I'm on my phone now. All right, <laughs> I just tapped out. That's okay, me. So you could tap out. I'll just tell everyone. So everyone get comfy. Uh, Everyone get cosy. This has to be short, by I'm the gonna way. I'm going to tell a story. Yeah. I'm going to start at the very beginning. No, no, because that was the first at the movie. dawn of time. <laughs> oh, <geez>. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. Is it quick? Short? Sharp? Yeah, just a All quick right. synopsis. So, <laughs> of the first movie or the second one? <laughs> well, I mean, they blend into each other, don't they? All right. So, it was silent because of the big monsters that came. Yep. And then there's a family and then a kid got taken. Whoop, yep. And then there was less kids. By one. Yes, but. And, but John Krasinski, How AKA. How do you feel about that, Claire? When there's <laughs> one less kid, how would you feel? Oh, look, I'm not, not totally happy. Well, okay. they fill the void because they have another kid. Yeah, but also would it, it'd be easier with like a family too. <laughs> I mean, emotionally <laughs> probably not as much. <laughs> no, but you know. Yeah. But, but like if you're living in an apocalypse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You tell what I wouldn't do. I wouldn't have bloody get to up the duff again. That's no, what I really would do. Yeah. In an yeah. apocalypse, crazy. But that's what she does. They're a hot and heavy Hollywood duff. couple. So, of course, they're going to get up the duff. <laughs> they get up the duff in the quiet place yep. where it's no noise. Yep. And she knows she has to give birth at some point where she has to scream all the time a yep. lot. This is a great recap of the other movie. Because <laughs> you're doing really all right. well. So, fast forward, <laughs> she gives birth. The, the big monster was chasing her. And then she like gives birth in a bathtub. Who knows why? And then everything's fine except, oh, no, Jennifer Kuczynski's dead, the dad. And so now she's stuck with two kids, a baby, and no husband. Yep. Dumb. Don't get up the duff in a pandemic. Man, useless. In a pandemic. Yeah. No, I did that. I got up the duff in a pandemic. You were pre But that is not apocalypse. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Number That's, two. I've yes. set the scene yeah. in the one. Okay. Now, do it. Can I? You can. can. I want you to. <laughs> I want you to do it. Is this every week on Suggestions? Is this how it goes? <laughs> Pretty much. Huh. So number two, it, it's still quiet. No one <laughs> says anything. They're still monsters. Yep. Except they've figured out that the girl who is deaf has mm-hmm. a hearing aid and if she puts it on the speaker, then the monsters die. Yep. For some reason. Yeah. And but, but not completely. You have to hit them in the face with a gun. <laughs> yes, that's correct. <laughs> and they, for some reason, leave their home and put the baby in a box. Yeah. And then they go on adventures. And I can't do any more spoilers. Yeah, that's true. Mm. And the, then yeah. that's it. The way we do things, we do non-spoilers, just some vagaralities. I meant to rewatch the first one. Why, why are they leaving the farm? Because they saw a fire <laughs> across the ridge. Yeah. Oh, is that why? Yeah. And it was coming? No, no, they, they saw like a signal fire. Oh, I Which thought you meant there was a fire but coming. But the signal fire, does that signify like just that there's more people around or that there's like people that are going to save them or something? Just that's, the first one, I think. Yeah, but see, that's what didn't make sense to me. Okay. It's just because there's other people around doesn't mean they're going to be great. Yeah. Which turns out, spoiler alert, <laughs> could yeah. be true or not true. Or not true. That's so true. Um, for <laughs> me, this feels very much the same as the first one. I think I might have liked it a, a bit better because all the rules are established and things kind of mm-hmm. moved forward. 
I liked that it moved locations, even though I didn't understand why you, you were there. Well, it well I like yeah. Well, I liked the the what you were saying, Claire. Like that the mm. the world. Like we get a we get a sense that this is like this really kind of provincial world where like you don't even know what's happening one town over. Yeah. Like you can't even. Mm. Like is you there just anybody? Can't even. You just can't. I just, you God, can't I just even. can't even in this world. Yeah, because the sand track ends, and then who knows? Yeah, what's after and it's the like you track. can't call someone, even if. The electricity or the mm. mobile service was working. If you called another town, you could get everyone murdered there. Yeah. So like you, you just it, it's like living in a medieval world, mm. like where you could be attacked by monsters at any moment. Yeah. Yeah. So and like yeah. a regular medieval world, the monsters are, is, is a cow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cow kill you in medieval times. A silent cow, a cow yes. that likes noise. Mm. Mm. Yeah, mm. both. I both. reckon. Yeah. I see. They had, they had both then, I think, didn't they? Right. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, I, I did like also that it picked up straight after the last one. I liked that they we knew that because they had the whiteboard that says, what is the weakness? What is? The, I, I know that was one of your favourite things oh, from yeah, the yeah. last one. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> the, the whiteboard of exposition. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you think they rewrote it? Because you have to get that oh, perfect. No, I reckon they. I reckon that's probably not even real. Oh. I reckon that's probably like they, they took a screen grab of the previous yep. one and they visual effected it onto a, I think you're right. onto a green screen so they didn't have to do cha- do any changes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I did... Um, it also, unless they were like, hmm. this is going to be so good, we are definitely getting a sequel. So we, we just, le- just leave everything as <laughs> Touch the whiteboard. Yeah. Just the- leave this town abandoned. <laughs> Keep everybody out of this town. We evicted <laughs> thousands of people from this town. Let's keep them out for yeah. a couple of years. <laughs> Yeah. It's pretty incredible they managed to re. I mean, I guess they kept all the sets and they had the location, but it looks pretty much the same as the first mm. one. Again, I, I didn't rewatch the first one, but it does feel like they were filmed at the same time. I also really just liked the setup of the beginning. Yeah. Of this of the second one, I just really loved seeing John Krasinski again as well because I bloody love him. No, I just think he's great and funny, and he wrote and, wrote and directed it, and it's cool. Yes. But I just, <laughs> I, I what I don't understand is he keeps saying in interviews that he wrote. Both of them as a love letter for his kids. It's a pretty bloody scary love letter. That's all yeah. I'm saying. How is that? Like, how uh, does that work? I mean, that he loves his kids so much he would protect them in an apocalypse. Oh, Look, yes. and he read it to them at night. <laughs> and anyway, and then a monster took your brother. <laughs> and, then it, and then it took me. <laughs> <laughs> <But that's laughs> and I didn't come back. I wasn't in the sequel. That's right. <laughs> but that's what I mean. I don't know. Because it, isn't it? You're not good at baseball. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still around, but just in your memories because I'm dead. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I mean. Anyway, good night <laughs> forever. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. just find it really like quite a weird thing to say, even though I get it. Like the sentiment yeah. is beautiful, but also it's about survival and family. And mm. yeah, but like of course you would want to protect your kids in an apocalypse. Yeah, and the whole re- kind of point of it is how great he is at protecting them. He's so awesome that he like manages to protect them. Like I mean, until the, he dies. The the novelty would be if he was like, I wanted to write a movie about how I wouldn't protect my kids in the event of an apocalypse. And it's just him, Forrest Gump, running just out of the state. I'm off to just the Hollywood Hills. <laughs> just up but the I, hill. Yeah, you're, James, you were right in the I Again, I didn't go back and watch the first yeah. one, but it, it feels like all the kids are the, still the same yeah. age. Is it? I guess is that's that just because, because I can't tell the difference between like an eight-year-old and a nine-year-old? I, or think, is that, it, I think it's yeah. that, but I think it's also this movie should have been out by a year. Oh, that's true. So it would have so, been filmed quite close yeah. to the, the So the I think for the next one, which they... They will do. I think they'd have to do a small time yeah. jump. Because I feel like this one feels, it feels like the middle one in a trilogy. Yeah. It just doesn't feel finished. Well, my complaint of this is it feels like an episode of a show in the middle of like an eight-part series. Oh, okay. So so the, the scene is sort of still being established. We're yeah. Not, we're not up to the big reveal of the big bad guy. Oh, do you reckon there's an even bigger, scarier monster that can hear even less? <laughs> What do you reckon? No, more. more. You can hear I even more. more. I was going to say more. <laughs> no, exactly. I can't hear as much. Whoa. <laughs> what I really enjoy then is James like doing your like actual visual kind of thing of yeah. the monster. Kind of like spirit. a weird goose-stepping octopus mm. just like yeah. flailing about. <laughs> Did anyone else feel it? Like because it was 97 minutes long, which mm-hmm. I think uh, it was a little bit longer than the first one. Did anyone else feel like it was just kind of – getting going and it didn't reach like a like a yeah, satisfying conclusion. Yeah, that's what I mean. It just didn't feel – it felt too short. Mm. Oh. The other thing that really annoyed me, Emily Blunt, who I always love as yeah. Evelyn, as the, you know, sort of the main character, I guess, in this. What's that scratching? At the Dog's thing? trying to get out. Oh, okay. Or something's trying to get in. Or something's trying to get in. Oh, God, be silent. <laughs> oh, no. Um, it's that monster that can hear less. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. We, we should be still, all right. We can, talk. we can still talk. It's okay. <laughs> It can only hear when you see What's going on in there? <laughs> so you can talk, but Banging there's just no like joy in your life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, 
Again. Anyway, Emily Blunt, I thought was so great in this. Emily Blunt and Millicent Simmons, who's her daughter, Regan, yeah. I thought were the two standouts. She's really good, yeah. She's I amazing. Think they're all really good, though. They're oh, they general. are. They're yeah. all, I mean, yeah, Noah Jupe, everyone is really good. Mm. I, what I liked about um, Emily Blunt's character is how miserable she looks <laughs> through the whole thing. Yeah. I really believe her misery and like her love of her kids and all that stuff. But I, what annoyed me was that she's just given birth and was, she doesn't yeah. breastfeed. She I doesn't was breastfeed in a single I was going to ask you specifically about how you feel about a woman who just gave birth. <laughs> in a bathtub. In a bathtub. Then the last movie like racks a shotgun and looks at the camera and goes, let's go or whatever, <laughs> whatever happens. And they, they run across town. Uh, how do you feel about all that? Yeah, all right. So, look, I, to be fair, I've had a friend who gave birth in two hours yeah. and felt like she could hike up a mountain afterwards because mm. of all the adrenaline. Yeah. So when you first give birth, I believe that. If it went, I mean, obviously, it's all about feeling comfortable and safe and she did it in a bathtub with a giant monster approaching. Probably yeah. not the feeling of safety that a woman would normally want in sure. her birth plan. Yeah, yeah. However, <laughs> yeah. The doctor doesn't put it in the birth plan <laughs> no. a lot. Can you ask for that? Yeah. <laughs> Please have a monster that can hear less or hear <laughs> yeah. more. Um, anyway, yeah. So, and the, then the trauma of her partner dying and that stuff. But I do think a little bit plausibly she could have got all that adrenaline and hormones yeah, and sure. somehow be like bleeding internally or whatever, but do it all. It's yeah. the mum can lift the car syndrome. Thank you. And mm. protect her kids and all the things. Yeah. But what I don't get is like after that all dissipates, She's like immediately hiking. She's like, yeah. right, I know what we need to do. Leave our home with all the food and all yes. the things and immediately take my baby. Carrying a chest. Carrying a chest with my baby with yeah. only one oxygen tank, which clearly is going to run out. I mean, what it, I mean, do you, would you have stayed if it was you? Yeah, it, yeah, immediately, yes. Yeah. Because they had food and all the stuff. And also she's just bloody giving birth. She's not free and sleeping. Mm. And the thing that annoyed me the most was the bloody breastfeeding thing because she has to keep her child alive mm. and the monsters are chasing her. And everyone knows you need to relax in order to breastfeed. I'm shocking all the people on the podcast It is shocking. Right now. It's shocking. Well, isn't but, the first know, few it days really of, annoyed me. But isn't the first few days of breastfeeding all about getting the colostrum and it's really about waiting for your milk oh, to come showing in? showing his expertise Just now. Mason. Show off. This is what yeah. Mason told me before the show. So <laughs> I'm really, this is really his his words. Correct. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Correct, James. Okay, He's well, there you go. On. So but, it works out. But there's just – I would have loved – I actually – as a – as a woman, I hate when people say that. But anyway, I, I will. It. I, I think will. it's empowering. I, yeah. only, I only hate it when men say it because it's inaccurate. <laughs> I don't want to come onto the podcast and immediately be like, you know what I want to talk about? Breasts because I'm a woman. No, but I, that annoyed me because I think there's an opportunity there to explore the fact that she's given birth and the aftermath of that and just how much harder. But all they kind of show for how hard it is is that she limps a little bit. Yeah, and that's probably from the nail she stepped on. Yeah, she on. stepped yeah, on that nail. Yeah, exactly. The last so one, yeah. there doesn't really seem to be any other kind of effects from that. Yeah. So I don't know. But I, but even so, I really enjoyed it. And I really liked how they positioned Millicent Simmons' character, Regan, as kind of the hero. She's the new John Krasinski. She is, She's apparently. She's Jack Ryan. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's a love letter to his children and he yeah. needed to somehow get in the fact how amazing he is. Yeah, my love letter to you is how you're a lot like me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what I really that's had amazing. a problem with. I was like, so you're not like your mother, you're like me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I also just really loved how they centred um, deafness and American Sign Language as the yeah. heroism of the story. Yes. In her, like, It's kind of all part of it, which is really beautiful. I think that's really cool about how their story of survival is – more effective than everybody else's based on that alone because yeah. that would be the one thing that, you know, you would have over advantage over literally everybody else that you come across. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I am um, – and I – Except a guy with a flamethrower. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm saying. No, they're, they're flamethrower proof. We see that yeah, in I the know. movie. I feel that's a plot hole. <laughs> <laughs> that's a plot hole. That's a plot hole, guys. <laughs> that's what I didn't understand. Why didn't they just keep shooting them? Because you got to wait till their the, heads are ex – Oh, yeah, because oh, yeah, they have know, the weapon. They have the weapon. Yeah. Mm. So they use it initially. Yeah. Why don't they just keep doing that? Yeah. Making the noise, what? shooting them in the face. Yeah. Boom. What I liked about the monsters this time is you see more of them. I, I always like the way that they move. They're kind of like tarantula-like. Yeah. Mm. There's something really unnerving about the way that they move. And maybe they have a second week. Two weaknesses. <laughs> Put that on your whiteboard times two. <laughs> but um, Big rolled-up newspaper. Is that what you <laughs> yeah, that right. Put them in a big jar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, take them outside. Put them in the garden. Yeah. yeah. But it seems like when you kill the one or two in your area – 
I think it's three because that's what it says on the whiteboard. Mm. Then they kind of fill in the gap and like more appear. You could just kind of do that until you get most of them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You could every day you could go out and just reel another one in and shoot it in the head. You could just do that every day. But that's what I mean. Why didn't they just stay in the house and do that? Mm. Mm. It's stressful. Yeah, Probably that would not be stressful. <laughs> yeah. I'd feel stressed out doing that every day. I'd be like, oh. You think you'd get used to it? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'd become like a, like a chore. Yeah. 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 I think also that there's there's kind of two storylines before we get into into spoilers where they the, the family splits off and one of them goes with Killian Murphy. And I thought Killian Murphy's character was really interesting, more so than John Krasinski's, because he's clearly deeply flawed. And from the moment you're introduced in him, but we didn't mention but up top there is a flashback where John Krasinski is in it. Mm. Um and he's like, You and me are good friends, Killian Murphy. Yes. <laughs> yes. We Let's know do each a other. manly handshake. You're not as good as me. <laughs> yeah. but you're okay. You're deeply flawed as a man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh you'll you'll do all right. I'm, yeah. Like I said before, I really enjoyed that. I can keep my family alive. <laughs> Killian Murphy. <laughs> well, like Killian your family. <laughs> Murphy. <laughs> That's your name. But, yeah, I thought he was a really interesting and compelling character that has a really great arc and you kind of don't know what way he's going to go because when you meet him, it's like this guy's on the fucking edge. Like yeah. this could go any which way and I thought that was interesting. Yeah, I liked uh, some of the stuff that I liked. Maybe I didn't think about it in the first one, but just the fact that they're walking around with no shoes on mm. is very tense it's for so me. The, the whole movie is just me going... I got soft baby feet. <laughs> Like and uh, but it's it, it's interesting that such a simple thing is so like that works it works for me yeah. at least in like ratcheting up the tension it's just like why not why not, why not take their shoes off that's mm. ooh it's a great point but yeah but I liked I I liked uh, that yeah we did kind of get we kind of at one point we sort of have like three separate plot yeah. threads that are all sort of coming to a head tension wise at the same time I thought that was very effective mm. and there are a lot of like there are a lot of setups in this that have like kind of payoffs that are kind of a bit on the nose where you're like, really? Okay, is that... Is it this thing? It is that, yeah, it's that yeah, thing. I'm doing the thing. But, but at least, at least there is... At spoiler. least there are setups that, that have payoffs yeah. as opposed to some movies we've seen recently that are all set up and no payoff. Sure. Which, Army it's, of the Dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you watch Army of the Dead, Claire? It's on Netflix. Well, if I said yes, would you fall off your chair? Uh, sure. Yeah, Yes. I'm not going to fall off my chair because oh. I know she's lying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't sit down for the thousand hours that Army of the Dead goes for. No, I would never watch anything called <laughs> Army of the Dead. Are you serious? I get mad at you when you show me something slightly scary. <laughs> but I make you watch Army of the Dead. <laughs> yeah, you do. I seriously do. If it's too scary, I stand up and get real mad. <laughs> it's it's like when you fart in the room and I get really mad I at you. I would never. I would you never. Do. They're the ones where we've had the worst fights <laughs> when it's so stinky and I'm all cozy in bed. No. Well, you should have put it in our vows for me not to do that. I should have, Mace. Mm -hmm. I should have. I also thought there were some story elements in this movie where you could have spread that over a couple of movies because they run into kind of two groups of people with vastly different living experiences. Mm. And we don't really get enough of either, I feel. I feel like one of the movies... should have been one movie about yes. group one and then the next could be yeah. about group, th or group two. Yeah. More mm. of like, you know, and then you... You know, do you do the group one movie and then you do a little bit of the second one at the end, at, mm -hmm. you know, at the end and then in the next movie. Does anyone else feel that that's... Do you mean the... Are we doing spoilers, we just do spoilers yet? I'll we... Let's do spoilers. I think that I found them both to be pretty satisfying. That's, I did, that's I all really I like them. Yeah, that's the I thing, was, yeah. I'm totally okay if this is the last one. Like, I enjoyed mm. this a lot, but I'm like... We'll talk about it spoilers. Yeah. Okay. But I'm going to say best movie ever, Claire. How do you feel about it? <gasps> best movie ever. I liked it. I think it's got yeah, like... I liked it Like too. the first one, it's got like a bunch of like plot holes, but I don't care. These are good enough. These are pretty <laughs> decent, aren't they? Yeah. They've got good performances and the, the central characters are compelling mm. and charismatic and it's got some interesting ideas, even if they don't all come together and why didn't the army figure out the monsters... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I? Oh, and the other weakness they yeah. obviously have. <laughs> when the when the second weakness is revealed, I'm like, oh, someone should have figured that out a long time ago. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Do you know the thing that got me? I reckon the most that I know you said, Maso, about the no shoe thing. Which, to be fair, full on. The other thing that got me that I found the most anxiety inducing is the baby in the chest yeah. with yeah. the breathing thing, and when the oxygen's going, and mm. I kept having to say to myself. They're not going to let the baby die inside yeah. the chest. Mm -hmm. like that would, they're yeah. not going to do that because I just I became irrationally terrified yeah. by that. Did you Did you find that affect you? Oh, I think the much? same as you. I was like, I mean, it was tense. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. I knew John Krasinski wouldn't kill another one of his kids. <laughs> good old JK. Yeah, no, yeah, he wouldn't mm -hmm. do that. That wouldn't be a good love letter. No, <laughs> no, true. 
But yeah, I found that particularly stressful. Yeah. That whole storyline just. I like yeah. the baby's tiny little oxygen mask. <laughs> like they were a tiny <laughs> little fighter pilot. <laughs> That's pretty cute. Anyway, let's do some spoilers. Do some spoilers. Okay, yeah. let's um, do it. So they can't swim. Yep. They are... Well, they don't look like they can swim. No. I guess they're dense. Well, yeah, because they're not It's they're not vulnerable to water because at one point a sprinkler goes off yeah. and one is getting drenched and it seems to be You see one have fine. a bath, have a shower. So, yeah, that's right. So it starts soaking up with a shower cap on with <laughs> a big, like, scr- ooh, big scrubbing brush. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I guess they're probably too heavy to... Yeah. Or they're... Too big to fail. Oh, oh. oh, support the big banks. Um, <laughs> but I guess my question is because at the end of the in, the, in the third act of the movie, we think they're one of them is drowned, but it's ended up on the boat. Yeah. Uh, and it makes it to the idyllic island where uh, they they avoided being massacred by these monsters. Yeah. Because they're, they're completely instinctual. Yes. So why wouldn't it simply attack everybody who's on the boat? I, I think, as Claire pointed out to me, because I went to the toilet in this part, <laughs> that was a different boat that drifted. Oh, okay, so yeah. it drifted. So it didn't, they, they didn't drive it there. and then Yeah, that's what, no, that's no, what no, I was... She, they, yeah. she, Good she, thing Claire was here because we both would have got yeah. that wrong and we would have got a thousand <laughs> messages. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, so let me point it out. You know. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, no, no, because the boat that he gets on is the one that she finds him. Okay. You yeah. know, she pulls out. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah. And what, it's more what? of a rowboat, whereas that was... Uh, Correct. Uh, a big kind of... Would, what would you call that? A tugboat? It's a tugboat. It looks yeah. like a tugboat. It's a Popeye tugboat. Correct. Yeah, and that's also why I think the monster doesn't tack immediately. Yeah. Because it's obviously drifted. I mean, yeah. it's a pretty big coincidence that it would drift all the way to the island. Like, but yeah, it obviously – Because it's not like he's got a little paddle and the alien's tides. like yeah, yeah. paddling yeah. away. Maybe it was something. paddling. Yeah. <laughs> what I don't I always understand wanted to get to this fucking island. Now I've got my one opportunity. <laughs> yeah. What I don't understand is because obviously this is a big spoiler that like they find this island because of the music that's been playing yeah. where mm-hmm. everyone is free from the monsters because they can't swim. Yeah. And what I don't understand is why when the monster gets there, everyone is so shocked that there could be a monster and there didn't seem to be any real plan. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I don't right. understand that because if you're on an island that's what – Less than a K from like giant yeah. apocalyptic aliens. Yeah. Mm. Of course you would have and you've some got a kind message of plan. That's like come to this. Well, silence. my question, yeah. and that's a good point, Claire, but my question was also, why is the message cryptic? I thought it was like a screening thing. Like we don't want no idiots. But we I want mean, music lovers. But you might have but that's <laughs> and the savants. Thing, because we have well that's the thing, because we have like you know, based on this, there are two groups of people who are not on the island, mm. uh, like n- regular nice people and psychopaths. Yeah. But what if you get a smart psychopath. What if there are a bunch of really dumb, nice people out there who can't figure it out and a bunch of really smart yeah. psychopaths who can figure it out and they go to the island? Mm. And you might say, well, it's because uh, it's a recording and they're sending out the recording and they don't need any, they, they can't have somebody in the room, but it's on a record player, yes. which will get to the end and stop. So there needs to be somebody in the room to reset the record player. So they may as well just be I somebody in there being like, read thing. that's not a record thing. Record players have that, don't they? No. Yeah, yeah, they do. Ooh. Yeah, but depending on the record player you've okay, got. Right. Not our, our I think one, there should just be a guy in there. Everybody should take <laughs> a shift and be yeah. like, we're on the island. Because it's not like the monsters can be like, oh, they're on the island. Yeah. <laughs> monsters don't understand radios. Maybe they do, though. Well, so why is it on a record? Why didn't they just have a digital file that put, like, presses repeat on Spotify <laughs> they didn't have a digital Spotify file. Yeah, but mm. they still have CD players, presumably. I don't know if they do, Claire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very presumptuous <laughs> on your behalf, Claire. <laughs> anyway, that's a really good point, Mason. Maybe yeah. they don't have a that. sports Walkman on the island. <laughs> yeah. One of those yellow ones. Because yeah. mm. exactly. I've got them all. I collect them all. <laughs> I think that uh, the Killian Murphy's character was really compelling because he's lost everything when they find him. He's like, mm-hmm. you can't stay here. And then you see like the steps that he, you, see, you almost see the wheels like turning in his head where he makes a decision. Like uh-huh. he gets pushed further and further every time he like has a conversation and you see more of that empathy kind of sneak in until it culminates where they they meet the weird salt skinned boat people. Was that what yeah, hap- was yep. happening there? They were living in the salt water? They're, they're all scurvied or something. Oh. They had red eyes. That's what I thought. They were all like scurvied and saltwatered and malnutritioned. And I see. I thought I was wondering whether they were like sort of bordering on that like kind of mut- zombie th- mutant mutation. thing. Oh, I just assumed they were cannibals. Ah, oh. is that what it does to you? Probably. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> there was. What made you think they were cannibals? One was just like chewing on a leg <laughs> in the background. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Thanks. And they had the song uh, by Fine Young Cannibals on the record. That's right. <laughs> I will. And, 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 and you both le- you both left for the toilet, but there is a moment where you see through their eyes and Killian Murphy and the daughter turn into big chickens, like big, <laughs> big roast chickens. With those lines coming yeah. up. Yeah. 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 Delicious. Yeah. Delicious Perfect. lines. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So, but yeah, that this is the bit you were referring to earlier, the bit where he knows the universal sign language for dive. Because he learned that once. He yeah. learned one sign language. Yeah. Uh, that was a bit. But you once. could just go like, do your head tilt. Just be like, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 you don't need to do yeah. that. Because that's really obvious as well. <laughs> yeah. It's so obvious. And the way he does it with his eyes yeah. wide, like, mm. Yeah. Do you know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? It's yeah. not like a secret sign language gesture. Uh, anyway, but I like that. How he, you know, he, he stabs yeah, that dude. And I feel I feel like like in, in directing and producing and directing this movie, it feels like it's very much like, it's been made by the numbers, mm. but not in a bad way in the sense that it's like, well, it's pretty stock standard, but like someone has clearly gone through this and gone, okay, well, if you set this up, you've got to pay it off and this has got to make sense and et cetera. Whereas yeah. a lot of movies will not, like they don't care. Like we watch a lot of movies that are big and flashy and impressive and they're enjoyable to watch as just like, you know, roll, as Martin Scorsese would say, a roller coaster. Ooh, we can't but, say then, that. but then after that, you're like, none of this made any sense. No, How like- did... Like mm. the Angina Jolie thing that we watched that you made me watch the other day with the Again, lightning it's that kept like attacking it. I make no her watch reason. these things. The fire, fire watching <laughs> yeah. whatever it is. I yeah, haven't seen that. that one where like it's a firestorm, but also there's some killers. But and there's also, lightning. And she, just, she gets hit by lightning twice. Whoa. Yeah. Two separate that's occasions. very unlikely. Yeah. I agree. But was Apparently it the same so. place? Uh, no. Oh, well, then that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> happens all the time. And there's like this giant bushfire that somehow just doesn't rage while she yeah. can have We talked like about Unsuggestible. Oh, last No, episode before. Yeah, we yeah. did. Yeah, I had so many feels. Also, why is she just like in her bra or in like a white see through t shirt? As I said, because it's sexy. Because it's sexy. <laughs> you could just make. She's a firefighter. Anyway. You've never seen a so sexy firefighter calendar? <laughs> have you ever seen one of those calendars? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> True. Stuff. I take it all yeah. back. But it reminds, I haven't seen it, but it reminds me of that game Firewatch. You remember that one? It's very similar to the game yeah, Firewatch, a game I have not played. Okay. But yes. It seems like we're in a new era of movies that are adapted from games, but sort not of. really. Yeah. But le- they're legally, th- this movie's legally distinct from Five Nights it at Freddy's. It does feel that way. Yeah. yeah, the end scene of that felt like a video game, you know, yeah. with the flecks of dust or it felt fire. Like the, like, it did feel like a them. Tomb Raider kind of huh. yeah. like uncharted boss fight at the end of really? that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Should I watch it? I it's guess I'll right. have to listen to Suggestible to find out. That's right. <laughs> no, you just said it was all right. So <laughs> You could definitely watch it. Mm-hmm. Still at cinemas. But uh, I also thought that the ending, the way it ended of like, we found out a way to kill the monster was the same way the last one ended. But that's what I mean. So yeah, that's why I'm yeah, like, yeah, is there really. more to this? I think there will be, but right. just like... Well, we killed two monsters. No, I, yeah, I get that, but isn't it more? It wasn't the ending of this one more like, and we've now broadcast that to the world, kind of thing. Was it? Well, I, I'm my impression was there that that would be broadcast. I mean, I guess there's no way to communicate that, though. That is there. Yeah, like, uh, my feel. Like you wouldn't if you heard that, you wouldn't play it out loud. No, would but you? I'm, but I'm, my guess would be that. This is going to, like, the implication there is that that information is going to get out to the rest of the sure. world and they're all going to yeah, do that. but and maybe then... have that scene. <laughs> okay, sure, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But even the fact that the kid was wearing the headphones as he was being attacked by the monster. Take mm-hmm. your headphones off. <laughs> Bloody kids and their headphones. Right? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. But no, I did, like, I liked how both of the kids, I know it was, like, a pure coincidence and, like, what a, what a coming together of minds and ideas and both of these kids are as good <laughs> as John Krasinski in a way. And they both had their moment to, to kill a monster. Yeah, and it was sort I of the like idea that. of like, the, the, ki- the kids are all right. The, the kids, kids are going to, kids are gonna, yeah, the kids are, yeah. I mean, not as good. <laughs> no. Maybe two of them equal one John Krasinski. Wow. Yeah. That's the official math. I yeah. uh, want to jot that down. Oh, you know, the, th- <laughs> the official math. You know that I've just remembered the other thing that really got me in the feels mm. was when the the kid, what's his name? Um Jeffrey. Uh, no. John Krasinski. Marcus. Ginger Marcus. Megs. Oh. <laughs> Ginger <laughs> Megs. He is in there with the – they're running out of oxygen in that little mm. room and it's shut. He can't open the door. It's locked and he's got the baby with him and the baby needs oxygen and so does he. And they're like swapping the tiny little oxygen mask uh-huh. and, I, and, and she's pilot. trying to get back to him. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Now I'm a fighter pilot. Now she's a fighter pilot. Anyway, and then when the mum gets there – because you sort of think, oh, God, he's going to let the baby die so he can survive. And then oh, he right, has yeah. the mask oh. on the baby when the door opens. Yeah. And I was like, I started, uh, maybe I'm hormonal. I know, but I was, just, I got a bit teary. Yeah. Because I was do like, look, oh, he saved his sister over here. Do you think, do you think, the, the, do, you, do you think Emily Blunt was like, oh, these bloody kids. <laughs> well, he's like, leave for five minutes. These yeah. But I, that was also one of those, those setups where it's like, 
oh, somebody is very obviously going to get locked in that. Yes. Yeah, in that, in that little With the, when you see the towel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. But, but again, at yeah. least it paid off. At least it wasn't a yeah. towel put over there and then it never, and then it never, <laughs> never it, was not, not everything is fine, you know. Sweet totally. pad though, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Sweet pad. You jump down a little tube onto a, onto a sack of flour or whatever. <laughs> wee, you say. Oh, I know, you go, a sack wee. of wee. <laughs> yeah. Wee, I'm having a good time. Great time. Everybody. It yeah. did feel like a little rabbit burrow or something. It did, yeah. I like yeah. how he put his wife like <laughs> up oh, in God. the rafters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was awful. That's just James. That's just where she died and he left her. Yeah. So I thought it was going to be like genuinely. This is why it surprised me that he turned good and does heroic stuff. Also, Digimon Honsu got murdered. I didn't expect that. That's right. Except oh. for the bit where he's like, "I have to get my son." <laughs> I'm like, "Oh I'm so no!" I'm so annoyed what are you for doing? him because I thought he was such a great character. Yeah. They didn't even give him a name. Do you know what his name is? Man on Island. Mm. Wow. They didn't give him a name. And also, maybe you should just... have tried better then. <laughs> I just feel like when you meet him as a character, yeah. he would immediately have had a better plan. Well, if the, if well the he put his kids in the there. cupboard, but it was also just a regular cupboard. It was just a yeah. regular, and everyone just seemed panicked. Like there wasn't yeah. a kind of. They just scattered. They just <laughs> scattered. Like I feel like in that kind of scenario, with yeah. that length of time to prepare, you would have had, and he seemed like the kind of character that would have mm. had like. All of these, like, you know, alert, yeah. alerts. I, I, get, I guess they, they got, got complacent. I was going to say, they yeah. got complacent. They're like, ah, probably won't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about the it. Pretty confident. Like we'll do it on the day. We'll figure it out on the day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Yeah, mm. anyway. But, yeah, if he had been murdered straight up, that monster would have torn through everybody there in, like, a minute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because That's he was the true. only one who was like, I'll drive a car. Sure. Yeah. A long way away. But then also panic that maybe the yeah. monster hadn't followed them or something, which actually, to be fair, I, that was pretty plausible yeah. that you would suddenly freak out. Um, so what do you guys expect from a quiet place to stay? Shut up. Still still be quiet. Three. <laughs> three. <laughs> Make that into a poster if you can. <laughs> no, don't do that one. I think they should just call it shh. Shut up. Hey, shut up. <laughs> Hey, wear no shoes or mm. something. But you think it's wrapped up enough? Well, I mean, I, the question that I ask in watching these movies is where did the monsters come from? Yeah. But this Asteroids. is But this isn't a universe where they can be like, well, let's get the space, let's go go into space, we'll get a shuttle together and we'll go into space yeah. and we'll, we'll go to these this alien's home world because everything's, like, everyone's dead. Yeah. Like, the world is over. So. I presume they're just like a parasite kind of just on a meteor. Oh, just a standard, just yeah. a standard yeah. parasite meteor sitch. Well, yeah. my, my feeling would be like it's a, like a weapon, like it's been deliberately Oh, okay, cool. In. <gasps> Do you think that would ruin it to be like, there's even quieter aliens, even <laughs> <laughs> this one, this, this, this one can't do a goddamn thing. <laughs> it's coming, they're coming to work. Yeah. Well, there's one that can hear a whole lot more. It's yeah. a giant ear. I'm just also, like to send through the atmosphere. <laughs> I can hear you. You know everyone. <laughs> just a near talking. The, the creators, they're 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 super intelligent monsters, but they can't smell anything. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're immune to all your farts, they say. <laughs> but I don't know whether it's that kind of series where like there's going to be a larger invasion. I think it could yeah. get more to War of the Worlds. But would in. you watch another one where it's just kind of mostly the same? Yes, because again. I think for me the family element of it is what mm. works, and not like getting a laser and going up into space or whatever. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. 10 movies in. A Quiet Place 3, we're getting a laser and we're going into space. <laughs> shh, shh, though. Don't tell them. We're going to get them, but don't tell in them. In space, we have the advantage because you can't hear nothing. That's true. Yeah. Mm. Really good point. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what? Sorry, I just no, interrupted no, you, that's good. Mr. Sunday Movies. <laughs> I do it all the time at home, but I shouldn't on your show. Not bloody wrong. No, you can do it. You can do it on the show. I do it all the time. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Well, I'm interrupting everybody. Because Clay, you would know that if if you if you don't interrupt him, he doesn't stop. He, he won't just keep rolling on. Yeah, through, can't so. stop. Won't stop. Mm-hmm. Just talks bloody forever. It's true. Talks everybody's ear off. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyway, I don't know what I was going to say. What was I going to say? <laughs> you what said uh, you about? said you interrupted me. <laughs> yeah. With the thing you don't remember anymore. Because I was about to say, let's wrap it up, boys. <laughs> Let, oh, <okay. laughs> no, that's what I was going to say. What I think would be interesting, because I agree, the family is what I found mm. so interesting. The characters, Emily Blunt, I would watch in anything. She's bloody awesome. I think it would be interesting if the the monsters all, like they figure out how to kill them, right? Yeah. But then you're just left with this planet that barely has any people left. Yeah. And watching how they manage to navigate that and then clearly the 
cannibal slash crazy mm. people who've like lost their minds or I don't know. What did you say? Covered themselves in salt water or something? No, I just think they were all salt water damaged. <laughs> sure. <laughs> from living in the ocean. But I, I think that could be interesting. Bunch of Matthew McConaughey's <laughs> just. That's right. All <laughs> right. But they all have right. the. All right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> I love it. Do you know he has an audio version of his recent memoir? Uh, yeah, I do, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's good. Anyway, everything just worked out for me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just kind of just went along with it. Yeah. Everything's fine. I'm really rich. All right. I'm uh, really handsome. <laughs> all right. All right. Now, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, I just think that would be interesting if you had a movie where halfway, like people figured out how to kill the monsters, mm. but then you had to try and figure out how to work together to actually achieve sure. that. And everyone, there's not that many people left on the planet. What, so to how to kill the monsters, you're saying? Like they've got or, the technology. Their monsters are gone. No, no. They've got the technology to kill yeah. them. But then how does a planet where there's l- not that many people and mm. a lot of people have, like, you know, got scurvy or are cannibals now, <laughs> like how do you actually rid the planet of that? Yeah. And how does the family navigate all that? I don't know. How do you corral a bunch of fine young cannibals <laughs> to fight against <laughs> They're the They're driving us crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then what do you do once you solve it? Like how do you actually Great questions. Start, all What's the monster you know? society like? Or what are they... Do they sleep or do they... I don't think so. Do they interact with they each skulk. other? I think they Do they fight with each other? I think they just spread out. So like one dies and they just expand their territory. Okay, right. But also there doesn't seem to be that... Like they're, they're not teaming with them, do you know what I mean? They're yeah, not yeah. everywhere. Mm. Yeah. So there must be a limit to how fast they you can... Do they breed? What are they... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You know what it's going to be, as yes. it always is? They'll be the giant one. That they all come yeah. from. You know how there's always the giant one can that's like a giant more, version of yeah, yeah. <laughs> just the giant ear or whatever it is. That's what it is, right? That yeah. they all spawn from this one giant one and mm. they have to figure out how to kill the one giant one and then they'll be fine. How many of those meteors just dropped into the ocean? <laughs> Good question. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Could have been worse then, I guess. Why are they all complaining? It could have been worse. <laughs> could have been worse. Yeah. Well, this says here Paramount Pictures hired a Jeff Nichols to write and direct a spin off based on an idea from John Krasinski. In May 2021, Emily Blunt revealed that Krasinski has an idea for a potential third film. So Jeff Nichols has directed a bunch of movies I haven't seen. Wow. Yeah. Can you give me some? Uh, In 2016, he directed three movies. Oh, he directed Midnight Special, the one that has Michael Shannon in it. I liked that. Okay. He directed Loving and he he directed In the Radiant City. Did he direct any of the um, Never Back Down fighting movies? (laughs) Doesn't seem that way, no. (laughs) He sounds like the guy who maybe would have done that. He's worked with Michael Shannon. He's worked with Joel Edgerton. He sounds good. Sam Shepard. Adam Driver. Ah. Oh, not the driver. The driver. He's a good one. Big that D, driver. they call him. Mm-hmm. The big D. Yeah, Got cool. big ears. He'd be a good alien in this oh, movie. Oh, he's the alien Incredible. queen. Yeah, he is. Like wow. a giant version Hi. of him. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, cool. All right. Um, anyway, Claire, we can find you, can't we? At, uh, Somewhere. At Claire Tonti. Yep. You also have a newsletter. I do. Comes out every Friday where I just talk about how much I don't like being married to James. <laughs> no, oh, <I'm> whoa. <laughs> Maybe I should read this. It's whoa. just a love letter to James where I write no, a post apocalyptic movie <laughs> all about how much I love you. And then you die. And then whoa. myself whoa. dies. Oh, it's no. up to me. <laughs> oh, no. Um, yes, yeah, so that comes out every Friday and I do Suggestible with you. Yep. Have we said Suggestible enough? I think so. Who knows? And we've got another, uh, you've got another podcast on the way. I do. I have another podcast coming out very soon. Maybe, you you know, you can swing back by. To swing back by. When A Quiet Place 3 comes out, you can come and promote your podcast. (laughs) But not a second before. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Claire, do you want to stay for the What We Reading segment or do you want to go? Would you like me to stay or would you like me to go? It's up to the guest. We leave it open to them, don't we, Mm -hmm. Mason? That's right. I will stay. Can I stay? You can stay. They can always say no. They never stay. God damn. What do we (laughs) do do in this situation, James? All right, everyone has to be quiet while I play the theme. I'm doing the theme. Fucked it up. I'm going to start it again. (laughs) 